missing teeth are a matter of concern, not just for the orthodontist, but for the patient as well. And there are some good reasons for that. Let's look at some of them. When a tooth goes missing, adjacent teeth tip into the space, opposing teeth can extrude, there might be bone resorption, the whole occlusion can actually collapse around this area, creating a very messy situation. Molar protraction doesn't seem to be an automatic choice. Some of the well-documented complications of this procedure are slow movement of the teeth, tipping of the protracted teeth, anchorage loss, overall causing an increase in the treatment time. Is there any technique out there that is easy to use, simple, effective, overall very clinician friendly for molar protraction? To find the answer to this, I need to connect to my co-author and the person who actually worked on this patient start to finish. Aditya Chibber. Let's do it. Let's connect. What do you think really stands out in your approach to this or overall this case report? Mother, to begin with, this is not just about molar protraction, but the entire posterior segment right from the canine to the second molar being pushed forward into the lateral incisor space. And that too without any anchor loss. Why didn't you end up using TADS? I mean, probably they are the best source of absolute anchorage out there right now. Reports still say that there is a 20% failure rate besides a learning curve associated with it. Coupled with the issues of patient acceptance, I would say it's not a very straightforward option. I mean, it's still worth a shot, right? 80% success rate? It's not bad at all. In this day and age, anchorage is no longer the primary issue. A common factor with all protraction methods is the inevitable tipping of molars into the protraction space. Let me explain. When the molar is being protracted, either by applying force from an implant or the anterior teeth, the force always causes a moment to develop around the molar, which causes it to tip. If more teeth are being protracted, then all of those will tip in the same fashion. The arch wire cannot take up all that load and will ultimately start buckling under pressure. This will lead to permanent deformation of the arch wire, distorting the entire occlusion. So you have a bigger problem here. Won't a stiff arch wire like a 1925 or a 2125 stainless steel provide that necessary counter moment? If you see here, as the teeth tip, they cause the deflection of the wire downwards in the middle and upwards in the anterior teeth. We did a short FEM simulation with the engineering department at the University of Delaware. This illustration shows uh, where the arch wire is under most tensile stress. The hot red color points to those areas. They are undergoing maximum distortion. Now, where does a fixed functional appliance fit in all this? This is the fun part. Let me show you. The force system created by fixed functional appliances on the lower arch have an intrusive and mesial force on the lower teeth near the canine. The mesial force takes care of the anchor loss while the intrusive effect plays a big role in preventing deflection of the arch wire in the anterior teeth. This automatically ensures that the arch wire remains straight, ensuring smooth protraction without any tipping. Check out this quick synopsis of this case report. Our primary concern with this 13-year-old boy was a congenitally missing lower right lateral incisor and a severely rotated canine next to it. The primary treatment objective was to close the space by protraction of the posterior teeth and obtain a class 1 molar and canine relation. Why protraction? Because he had a very good profile in upright anterior teeth. The upper and lower teeth were bonded and banded and the lower canine derotated. A 1925 stainless steel arch wire was used for molar protraction. An elastomeric chain was engaged between the canine and the lower first molar, creating a force of approximately 300 grams. Simultaneously, a fixed functional appliance was placed for anchorage and for preventing deflection of the arch wire. The protraction phase lasted about 10 months. A pan was taken after space closure to check for root positions. And as you can see, good root movement of all the posterior teeth was obtained requiring no additional step for root upriding. The total treatment time was about two and a half years. We followed the patient through retention and everything looked great. 
Thank you AJODO for giving us the opportunity to share this video and thank you all for watching and listening. Bye-bye.